Shalom. Welcome to Ancient Principles and Kingdom Authority. I'm Rabbi Kurt Landry. I'm enjoying these podcasts, literally answering your questions, and I hope that as I answer other people's questions, it's connecting some dots for you. Because the whole principle of ancient principles brings kingdom authority into the here and now. Because if you understand the past, it helps you to be empowered for your future. So your question today is, can you encourage us with a story where you've surrendered in the early days of the walk, of your walk, and now? And is there a difference in how you respond now versus in the past? Oh, my gosh. Hmm. I would say the biggest difference in 33 years and understanding that I got saved at 36. So from 36, let's say, to 46, that was being involved with getting airplanes from Boeing uh, 747s out of Seattle to Russia, loading it up with our people, Jewish people, and bringing them to Israel. And uh, that was a season of bringing ships from Tarshish. Um, We were operating as entrepreneurial businessmen. I was a fruit broker. And so we were operating with high levels of kingdom finances with other, uh, we would be seven mountain of influencers. We were brokers and business people. So it's very different than what I do now. Um, I would say the biggest factor now is I, let's say the worrying about what happened when we did that, if there was a scale of one to five on worrying, I probably would be involved in concern at a three to a four during most of the time. And I had very little patience. I was younger, very driven, and very inexperienced with the Lord. So I'd say probably the biggest difference is uh, at 67, and actually I'll be 68 here in a few days, my worry factor is probably about a one. <laughs> My worry factor is probably about a one or a two. Um, <clears throat> because of the experience of 30 years, I know when I hear the Lord to ask me to do something that I don't put any time table on it. You know, I just don't like he may ask me to do something and it is actually a step of something that's going to happen 10 years from now. So I have the experience and because I don't worry and I'm not impatient, I actually get more done with less. That would be the biggest difference. And I see more miracles and more favor and more signs and wonders now than I did when I was worrying and striving and trying to make things happen. And I actually manage more finances in the kingdom now as a full-time, let's say, apostolic type person than I did when I was in the corporate world. So, you know, it's, it wasn't, it was a journey and, and there was a pendulum that swung, but you asked the question. So I would say patience, trust, and there's a certain amount of Fatigue, I don't have the energy to strive and I don't have the energy to fight with people or circumstances. I I don't have it. So I have to be very careful with the energy I have that I keep it in a good river. And when I was younger, I had plenty of energy to strive and to fight. And that's the beauty of enjoying older age is uh, I'm actually happier and more excited about life now than I was then because of what I just said. That was a long way of answering your question, but just my job is to be in relationship with you is to be as honest as I can. And so I try to do that as in as as humble as I can say it by telling you the truth. Um, You know, here's the key. It says many believers do not walk and power of authority, this is one of your questions, in their faith walk. 
How can they become strong men and women of God? Uh, and you say, uh, and that they long to be. Well, they can't. Okay, I'm just going to tell you they can't. I was listening to a testimony of Justin Bieber. I think that's his name. The singer, young man. And there's a quasi connection to somebody in Hollywood that I know that. So I've different conversations about him and his life. And man, he's just been messed up. So anyway, I was listening to this uh, testimony of him. And he says, listen, I believe in Jesus, but I don't walk with Jesus. I said, okay, that makes sense. And then he said to the interviewer, he says, the reason I don't walk with Jesus is because when I first got saved, I was surrounded by these kind of believers you're talking about. They say they're Christians. They're, they're in the Christian culture, but they don't have power and authority because they're really not walking in, in, in authority. And so what Justin said, he said, they say one thing and do another. And so him as a young believer, and I've seen this so many, uh, you know, in sports and in, in business, um, in the, in the places that I interact with and in government, that's what happens is you get these powerful people saved and then the enemy surrounds them with weak Christians and, and all they do is, is lay a fake, so to say, witness and people follow that and then they say, well, it doesn't work. That's why I, you hear me say, show me your friends, I'll show you your future and then show me the books you read and I'll show you how fast you're going to get to that future. Because if you don't invest in your own intelligence in the Lord and you don't hang out with people who are actually doing what, where, and going where you want to go, then you're not going to get there. Uh, I just say that it's just a matter of like, well, maybe I will. Well, maybe you will. And if you do, then praise God, you'll be the first one. Cause I've been around a lot of people and, um, there's only one road and it's narrow is the the pace narrow is the road and few that find it. So yeah, I don't think if you don't walk in authority, um, you're not going to fulfill what God asked you. It takes that surrender and that authority. So your question is in second Timothy one seven says that we have a sound mind and why are we still experiencing anxiousness and fear? Well, you have to look at that whole scripture. It says, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of a sound mind. So the key is you have to face your fears. That's what the whole faith walk is about, is once you make a decision to surrender to God, then what happens is he starts kind of calling your fears out, kind of like Moses with, with the Pharaoh. All right, let's bring out the flies. Let's bring out the blood. Let's, you know, and it's just start calling, let's bring out the hail, let's, you know, and the death angel. So everything starts to come out. And what happens is you need that testimony in your life to overcome. And so the key here is not that you have a sound mind, but the reason you have a sound mind is because you have faced the fears and you have exchanged your fears for faith in God through his love. Faith works through love. So if you look at the power of faith, it needs plumbing. No different than in your house. If you want water to come into the kitchen or the restroom, then there has to be pipes that take it from one source to that location. In your spiritual walk, love is the PVC pipe, and faith operates in it. And it goes where the love is directed. So if you'll follow the Father in love, you'll pour out what God has given you in the right location. Because you know what it's like when water pours out in a house in the wrong location. Yeah, that's, that's, that's called a, an insurance claim. So your next question is, is, why are we to renew our mind every single day and meditate on his word both day and night. Well, this is coming out of Joshua uh, chapter 1. I would say it's probably verse 7 and 8. So think about where this scripture came from. Here's Moses, the greatest leader, the deliverer. 
all these great miracles. And Joshua, so to say, worked for Moses. He was under Moses. And now Moses is dead. And guess what? He's dead, but now we're actually going to go into the promise and the calling that he talked about for over 40 years. And we have waited for for hundreds of years. And who's going to lead these people? Joshua. So what does he say to him? Moses is dead. As I was with Moses, so I am with you. Meditate on the word of God day and night that you might be of great success. Why is that? It's because you, everything in your life cycles in a 24-hour period, and the word of God has to cycle through your mind, will, and emotions and your spirit, man, every 24 hours. Just like you have to eat and drink, you have to eat and drink the word so that it transforms you, not so much for what was, but it's energy to renew you for what is to come for that day. Okay, I think that answered that. Does habitual sin and generational curses play a role in our inability to operate in power, love, and a sound mind? Okay. When you're in habitual sin, um, what does the scripture say about your needs? Ask and you shall receive. But in the book of James, it says you ask amiss. Why? Because he was correcting the disciples because they were quarreling, fighting, and covetous amongst themselves. And they said, as long as you are fighting amongst yourselves, then you can ask, but you're not going to receive. So habitual sin and generational curses that produces, let's say, habitual bad choices that actually are counted as sin, it separates you from your ability to love others because inside you know you're betraying yourself. That's why the Lord took 613 mitzvot in the Hebrew laws, instructions, 613, and narrowed them down to two. And those two are Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy mind, with all thy will, and love thy neighbor as you love yourself. So when you have habitual sin and you're not repenting for it, and it could be rooted in a generational curse or not, doesn't really matter. But when you are constantly sinning, in fact, when you sin and your sin becomes so familiar that you don't even know you're sinning anymore, when, the, when you get to that stage, then what happens is you have no authority in the Spirit, and you are difficult to love others because inside you have betrayed yourself, so you're not loving yourself. The only way to love yourself is to repent to God for the habitual sin and the generational curses sin in your life, and ask the Lord to refresh and renew your love with him and your love for yourself so that you can give that love to others. How do we truly walk out of agreement with works of the flesh, works of our flesh, so that we can walk in greater authority in Christ? How do we truly walk out of agreement with the works of the facts. How do we, okay, I was listening to this question. How do we get out of agreement? Surrender. We talked about that earlier. Um, if you're striving, these are issues of the heart. If you're striving, you're fearful, you're doubt. Fear, doubt, and unbelief are sin. They're just as bad a sin as pornography or robbing and stealing and murder. It's all the same thing. So what happens is you, you have to be able to walk by faith. And to walk by faith, most of the time, the Lord's going to ask you to do something that you have to have faith to accomplish. If everything you're doing 
you are able to do with your own talents and abilities in the flesh, then that's not really walking by faith. Walking by faith is doing the best that you can do, asking the Lord to bless the works of your hands. Then he'll breathe on it, and by faith, he'll uh, 10 times it or make it exponential, and he'll, he'll breathe growth into it. But you know it's God. You don't think it was you. You don't take credit for it. You give all the credit to him. So how do you walk out of, out of agreement with it? First of all, you seek first the kingdom of God. You write the vision of what he's asked you to do according to Habakkuk 2. You make it plain. You go to our webpage, get goals to grow by. There's questions, questionnaire that's there, free download. Fill out the questionnaire, write the things down, and then look at what you, how you answer those questions and then look at what God is asking you to do because those questions pull out the desire of your heart, which are connected to your purpose, identity, and calling in Christ. And then walking by faith is you'll say, this is the answer. <coughs> Excuse me. This is the answer. And now this is what I'm going to do by faith to start walking down the path. And when I start to walk in it by faith and things still go wrong, I don't stop and question. I keep walking one day at a time. Can you pray with us? We feel like we may never break through. We need someone to believe in us and remind us of who we are in Christ. Well, I'd be honored to do that. And I'm going to end with that. Okay. I want you just by faith, if you're listening to this podcast or watching it, I just, I just want you to extend your hand and, and just symbolically, if you were here, I'd just have you put your hand in my hand. Okay, and I want you to look you look me right in the eye. And God loves you. He's no respecter of persons. He created you for a purpose. He sent his son to pay the price for your life. And he's going to finish what he started. So your last question is, can you pray with us? Absolutely. We feel like we're never going to fully break through. We need someone to believe with us and remind us of who we are in Christ. So I'm just going to extend my hand to you, and I'm going to ask that you symbolically just put your hand in my hand like we're shaking hands. And I want you to hear this. The Lord loves you. He created you in his image. He said, it is good. You are good. God is good. God is love. God wants to bless you. God is not a man that he should lie. God is sending his Holy Spirit to you right now to empower you for breakthrough. Just go ahead and say, I receive it. I receive a fresh baptism of his Holy Spirit with fire to consume all doubt and unbelief tied to bondages. I surrender to victory. I release all my fears and leave every fear at the foot of the cross. I exchange fear for faith. I exchange doubt for belief. I believe I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who gives me strength. I decree his word that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I thank you that the Lord has called me to prosper and blesses the works of my hand. I am the blessed of the Lord. I am a son or a daughter of the King. He desires to fulfill his covenant promises in and through me, and I receive it. I 
surrender to all that is written in my books in heaven and all the workmanship that I'm called to. I desire to walk in that, nothing less, nothing more. And I know that when I walk in it, that it will be exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask or think. So, Father God, in Yeshua's name, I come out of agreement with the thought that I can't break through because I'm broke through right now. In Yeshua's name. Well, God bless you. See you in the next podcast. And remember, the more you dig into your ancient principles, the more kingdom authority you'll walk in today and the rest of your life. Shalom.